Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. It's Angela Prophet, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today, I'm joined by the best communications and event consultant in the business, Allison Burry. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. I'm so excited to share some of our past experiences together. We've definitely been through some unique situations over the years. What are we discussing today? Today, we are talking about fundraisers and how fundraising events are very, very different than a wedding. Well, tell us the story. What happened this time? Well, at this point in my career, I haven't done a whole lot of fundraising, but... I knew that we had a one main sponsor for a healthcare event. And I mean, I work with different budgets all the time. And so when they told me how much we could spend, I thought, well, this will be a great event and it'll be fun to plan. And it's for a great cause. And, but the people that were putting it on for the first year had no clue what they were doing, like no clue. And so, knowing how to put on an event and a wedding and then figuring it out on the back end of the fundraising stuff, you know, I kept asking them questions like who's in charge of getting the money and who's in charge of getting the items and the sponsors and the donations and who's going to pick it up and who's going to do the bid sheets and who's going to give out the, the whoever wins whatever they win at the end of the night. And there were just all these things that they just wanted to do a fundraiser to raise money for their son's disability, which was awesome. And I think I really overwhelmed them with all these questions. And I'm like, we can do this stuff for you, but you said you have a ton of volunteers and other people that you know through your group that want to help. And so give me all their information. We'll organize this. And you know, just from an accountability standpoint, I emailed everybody, everybody knew what they were in charge of. It actually worked quite well um, from just my opinion, except a few little snafus and how the differences between like a wedding and a fundraiser is just very different. So for example, we had several volunteers checking people in. They had already pre-purchased their tickets, but you could buy tickets at the door And then they wanted to sell t-shirts and they had swag bags from the main sponsor and there were a few vendors involved and we had everything organized and it looked really good. And I asked the ladies that were working the booths to sell the t-shirts and the bags and all the different things they had. Like, do you have everything you need? Are you good to go? Like we even have these little fanny type things that like hold our iPad and all of our electronics, but... I didn't even think to ask them, like, do you have that for the money? And boy, do I wish that I did ask them. Because when they arrived and people started showing up, actually a little bit early, the lady, one of the ladies came to me and she said, we don't have any money. We need money to, like, we we brought a box (laughs) to put the money in. And we have a square account. We have multiple square. And so... They were, we showed them how to use their iPad to take money. Like, and most people carry credit cards, but I was shocked at how many people actually had cash. And again, not being involved on the fundraising side, like people bring cash and they spend it and they bid on things. And it was super neat to watch it all. But the one little problem was we didn't have any change. And so she came over to me and she's like, um, we really need change and you can only get so much money out of an ATM on a Saturday night because the bank's closed. And so here I am like driving around getting money out of different ATMs and then going to places asking for change because I needed like ones and fives, not like 
a bunch of 20s. And so it's just funny that I'm like, okay, I'll go around, like, I'll go get some change. I mean, we, we needed about $1,000 in different bills to give people change. Um, so that's one thing that it was just kind of a fiasco. And then she had to write people's names down and then how much she owed them. And then she's like, when the planner gets back, we'll get you your change. And, you know, so it was like a little disheveled of me, like, walking around giving people cash. That was a little bit weird. Um, so now when I'm involved in anything where we are selling something or there's money, I definitely ask more questions and, and who is in charge of that. Um, the other thing is having volunteers in charge of the money probably isn't the best answer. And I probably will never do that again if, if we're planning. Um, other little sad, funny things that were going on while I was getting money is the lady who started this whole fundraiser, she has two boys and they're probably like in junior high and a security guard comes over to me, which is like this big dude who's semi freaking out. And he's like, there's a lizard over there on a collar, like on a leash. And we don't allow pets at this venue. I mean, he was genuinely kind of freaking out. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, are you hallucinating like a lizard? And so he moves out of my eyesight so I can see. And sure enough, I'm like, oh, the lady who's like in charge of all this, who rented your venue, that's her son. And so I don't know what that thing is, but it was like this humongous lizard that did have a collar and a leash. And um, he's like, well, he has to stay outside. And thank God, like the weather was nice. We had a tent. It was like semi-indoor, outdoor. So I walked over to the little boy and I said, um so you brought your pet with you? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, does your mom know that you have your big lizard? He's like, it's an iguana, not a lizard. And I just, I'd never seen anything like that, like in a public (laughs) space, especially a fundraiser. Definitely not a wedding. Um, We've had some animals at weddings, but not that. And, you know, I told him like, well, you're going to have to stay outside. Like the venue doesn't permit it. And so he did and it was fine. But I, I'm not a mom, but if I was, like, I would tell my kid, like, you cannot bring your pet iguana that's four feet long on a leash to an event. So that was pretty funny. And then they really, another little sidebar thing that happened is, um, you know, at this time, drones were becoming very popular downtown, and they were causing some trouble with crashing and I think somebody's finger got cut off or something um so people were police were like not at our event no not at our (laughs) event not our event but around that time and so they had paid for a drone to be flown to capture video for the promo because they planned on doing this fundraiser for years to come and so we had a little argument with the on-site security there about flying the drone and security So those were just things in the background that were being worked on while I was running around getting money. And these are just things that you just can't plan for. Like, I've never had to put on my timeline, like, no No lizards lizards. (laughs) allowed. Um, So that was just a little funny tidbit. It was definitely a very good experience. And I think we had to get all that cash. Like, I've never held so much cash. You know, like, when you get $1,000 worth of $1 bills, you know, it's like a humongous stack of cash. And I was just, it was nerve-wracking to be carrying that much money around for somebody else. Um, Especially with how, like, it was just windy and we're just holding it freehand. I'm like, what if the wind blows and, like, or I fall and (laughs) all this cash blows away? Um, but it was definitely a learning experience, and we have now know to ask whenever we're selling something. Um, but Angela, what would you say was your biggest takeaway from everything that happened that day? I would say that if you're doing a fundraising event and the person is hiring a professional planning company to hire your own staff, and that's great if volunteers want to come and help, usually it's way more trouble than it's worth. Um, but to have your, your staff who understands what their role is in place. And then again, the volunteers can always help, but don't rely on the volunteers to do a very specific job and certainly not handling the money. Great. Well, Angela, can you share with our listeners some of the different products and resources you have available to help wedding and event planners? 
Absolutely. You can visit the blog on the website, and there's lots of great articles and resources available there, which it's angelaprofit.com. You can sign up for tips and resources and be part of our email list. We'll send you all kinds of juicy details. We do webinars and live events, so watch social media for more about that. Awesome. Well, Angela, thank you so much for sharing your valuable advice with us today. I can't wait for next week to tell more of our incredible experiences together. And thank you, Allison, so much for joining me. And thank you so much to our listeners for joining us today on Weddings Unveiled, Professional Tips and Secrets on Wedding Planning and Event Design. Tune in next week to learn more from our past experiences. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Be sure to subscribe today so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. I'm so passionate about helping other event professionals, and with my background in psychology, I appreciate that our best selves develop from real-life situations. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on angelaprofit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to angelaprofit.com.